Hello and welcome to this training session. My name is Ashraf Ayat and I'll be working with you today on what's new in Modbox 2010. To start up with, uh, you will see that uh, you can have an additional template models that will be available for you. For example, you will have a car and uh, a T-Rex. So for, let's load the T-Rex here, for example. So we can look at the new filters that's been added to Modbox. So the first three here, Tone Mapper, Depth of Field, Ambient Occlusion, you've already been aware of this been in 2009. The addition that we have now is the screen distance. And once I enable that, it gives you that depth of field render if you're used to using another 3D application such as Maya or Max. And what that does do is that the closer the object it is to the camera, the brighter the color it is. For the white, it's a gradient color between black and white, so now this is towards the white color. And the further it is to the, from the camera, it gives you the gradients to the black. You can overdrive, or actually there's a couple of options you can do to modify this uh, image. You can use the invert. And what they'll do, it will obviously uh, reverse whatever was white becomes black and the black becomes white. So let's just go back to normal. And now with the white level, that pretty much is the plane. Where is that white going from? And so let's overdrive it here to give you that better idea. See now the white starts from here and I can move it down and you can see it move it towards the tail. Alright, so let's put it back to zero. This is the default that we used before. For the black, let's uh, overdrive that with minus five. That will give us a better idea of what's going on. So I can move that plane so where's where I want it to be. So as you can see now I'm putting it back towards the zero. And this is the default option that I have. Once you have that adjusted, which usually the default is pretty much what you need, uh, this will give you a nice uh, depth of field image. You can say save save that image and that will enable the 16-bit format that you can save it to, which is a floating bit that give you more accuracy when you take it to uh, maybe Photoshop or After Effects or whatever compositing package that you wish. This will allow you to use that to drive your depth of field in post. So this is for the screen distance. Let's disable that and go to the normal map. So this normal map filter, as you can see here, automatically enable the normal map cam per camera for view. And well, this will do, again, you can use this image by doing File, Save Screen Image, and you will get this option, which is by default the option that of your uh, window screen, but you can also multiply it by 2 or multiply it by 4. This is not a zoom in, this is actually multiplication of the, or, or actually duplication of the size image. So the image quality is not actually decreased, it is at accurate image size. So I'm just going to disable that here. So the benefit of using this is you can use that information to take it to another package such as uh, After Effects or any compositing package to alter your lighting information in post and that will be a different uh, podcast by itself so this is for the screen distance, normal map finally the uh, non-photorealistic which is pretty much like cartoon or comic lines so let's go to flatlining so you have a better idea of what's going on I just divided the object to get a little bit of smoothness in here. Okay, so we have a couple of options available for us. By default, you have the noise scale. And you will see here, it add more noise, or the bigger the noise becomes. I don't want to say noise scale, because here, noise amplitude, which is the modification or the multiplication of that noise to make it bigger. So you can see here it makes it the noise actually bigger than it, it is. So I'm just going to drop it now to... So by zero, it's the, the lines are perfect. So again, this is for just for the line. Yes. So the pencil scale, uh, all right, so if, I, if I change that, you can see here it is, the, the smudges of the, of the uh, shade itself. You can see that very obvious here. So now for the fill noise amplitude, again, this is a scale factor. So once I increase it, you will see the, the fill itself is coming out. And the paper noise, which is in here, I hope this uh, capture will grab this info here, that you can see it in here. So we're adding more noise to the paper itself, which is the background. The gradient width, you can see now it's getting bigger by increasing it. And for the fray strength, the more 
the more it is the more you can see it because you can see it here now going all the way here so this is now for the non photorealistic there is an additional one and this one if you have an nvidia card that will have this enabled that you'll have nvidia sso which is uh, screen space ambient so once i subdivide this and just give it a couple of lines you will see here I have an ambient occlusion that's been added to my mesh let's go to flatlining and now you can see it very clear in here so we have a couple of options here to control it the first one actually let me go down all the way to the bottom because we have an option that says show ambient occlusion result and this will give you that ambient occlusion for, for the screen space which again you can do file save screen and take it to your uh, Photoshop or whatever and use that image too as a multiplication or multiply on top of the color image and will give you that ambient occlusion or that nice depth that you will have for your model so I'm just enabled the show ambient occlusion results so we can work with the number of steps zoom in a little bit and if I do number of steps if I reduce that number I want you to pay attention here you barely see anything or actually the the accuracy is not there anymore so I increase the steps to three four see getting more accuracy so 16 we will have nice collusion here the number of directions let's say uh, let's drop this to four and we're gonna go back to number of directions because there is another field that works with it which is the randomized directions so let's drop this to actually drop it to two here and let's go to randomize direction and disable that I want you to see what's gonna happen here so it, by by doing the randomized direction with the more value of here the more value you're gonna have in here as so let's say at eight and then I enable randomized dire direction you will see that the uh, occlusion is going towards different different directions and this is controlled here by by doing the randomized directions that will give you that effect of blurness that's going around don't get this confused because there's another one here that's uh, controlled by the radius so if I get here increase the radius this will increase the radius of the actual ambient occlusion and this can be also see it here by reducing the steps All right, and you can see how far it is the the steps now work with that distance so think of the radius as a distance for how far it is is going so for the attenuation you want it to be at one because the lower you get you'll be reducing the quality of the points that are next to each other so well, let's keep that to the value as one the contrast is very self-explained the more you increase the contrast you will have more differentiation between the black and white so let's go down to uh, a proper value maybe 1.5 as it was before the check for use view depth as you can see here it can it can actually calculate the depth of information of that object and according to that see I'm doing that on the tail it will give us a proper calculation of the ambient occlusion according to the depth All right so we already talked about the randomized directions so for the blur radius I'm just gonna disable the show ambient occlusion results and we can have a better result in here so if I do this one you can see it in here let's do eight you can see here the blur radius is very very efficient here and and you can see it obviously by by increasing that or reducing that this is very low quality this is a nice blur all right the ambient blend I'm gonna go back here to show uh, AO results ambient blend is a multiplication of the strength of that ambient so if I do two let's disable the show ambient occlusion as well so this is the one and two and of course if I keep adding that that strength keep on increasing all right so these two values uh, will not give you a uh, proper display if you have the show ambient occlusion on so that's it for the uh, NVIDIA SSL one other thing that I should point out that you can use number of uh, filters and you can stack them on top of each other so if you can put another NVIDIA SSO as much as I want and I keep modifying that I you know until I get the desired look that I'm after.